I'm here, I assume, I didn't ask, basically because I've, among one of my four jobs that basically I spend all my time doing is uh, I've been writing a book for O'Reilly on mobile interfaces, I call it a, the pattern book, for about the last nine months. Um, collected, oh I don't know, I wrote it down in my notes, about 60, something like that, some ridiculous number of patterns. Um, and it's being edited right now, by the way, is the reason I'm not waving around a copy of it. It's also, that's not the final uh, parrot. It's actually a lovebird. Don't ask me why. Um, it's apparently, it's a color printed book, so therefore it'll be a brightly colored parrot. I've never seen a picture of it, though. Um, also, if you want to see what I did, you don't have to take my word for it. There's a website where we've been putting everything up. I actually uh, collaborated with a friend of mine who now works in Australia. So we put everything up on the wiki and trade like that. But you can see it. Just go to that address, check it out. Uh, you'll have to ask me for uh, access or somebody because we got lots of uh, evil communist spam bots putting stuff up there, so we had to lock it down. So you can't just go in there like a normal, like it's Wikipedia and start, start typing. But every bit of content's there, including a bunch of other really interesting stuff that you might like, like uh, if you uh, see at the bottom of articles, hey, here's some patterns about how to use Nokia interface or something like that. Every time I see one of those, I put it up on this blog. So I've got UI patterns, stencils, and everything. I have, I believe, 70, 72 links right now. So I try to keep it com com comprehensive. If I'm missing one, tell me about it or add it yourself. We're good. First, I want to talk a little bit, before I get into my other, my more argumentative points, about what a pattern is to me. Because there's a few definitions, and not all uh, pattern libraries that I see are laid out exactly the same way. First of all, I think patterns are universal. This is my, a picture of my stuff. <laughs> some of it. I brought some with me just to demonstrate, if you're wondering how many things that is. <laughs> About a third of those actually still work. I can power them on. Some of them have network access. Uh, that's also not all the funny little mobile devices or screen devices I have. I ran out of room on my porch, and I ran out of pieces of foam core to put them on. So I have even more than that. Um, not just to be a huge nerd, to gather them all up. Um, this is because it's important to understand how things are going to work on different devices. It's important to understand history of things. Um, it's important to understand how, how things work on um, the fact that lots and lots and lots of people carry around these little message phones, for example. And not everybody has even a smartphone at all, but they still have basically the same needs. Um, and so. There's lots of cool designs you can be inspired about from any particular platform, but patterns need to be universally applicable, or applicable, whatever the right word would be. Also, um, yeah, keep that, keep that, I say keep that in mind in general. I like to harp on this one a lot, actually. I car I've carried uh, four different OSs and seven different devices in the last three years. It's my next question right after, why is there a pair on the cover of the book, is which device do you carry? Doesn't matter. Right now, it's a, door, it's a, what is it again? A droid to global, that's it. <laughs> but it doesn't matter, because I change out all the time. Um, similarly, I have 10 uh, web browsers on the phone. I didn't even, <laughs> so try to name them all. Actually, one you can't have, because I'm doing a browser project. But that kind of thing. I do all kinds of things that are inconvenient to my daily life of using the phone to make sure I understand what everybody else's convenience and inconvenience is. So just one of those. Patterns are, it's different, generalized. They're, I used very few um, illustra uh, sorry, screenshots in the book. There's, there's lots of other ways they're generalized, but my best example is that they didn't take lots of screenshots of cool things, but we drew illustrations to explain the core features. It would be hard maybe to understand what a list view is if I just took a picture of a couple list views, said these lists. Instead we drew, it's only line by line items and you highlight one thing and they usually have a title up top. So you get, I don't know if I can point, show about a laser pointer, uh, that thing. And similarly, oh, so that's, uh, yeah, that's scrolling or something like that. I can't, I should have labeled it. And the bottom one is remote gestures. Um, so for example, the way a Wii works, the way Connect works, only that, the stuff you need, arrows to describe it, highlights to describe that stuff. But only the information you need to understand what the point of the pattern is. Patterns are organized, so they're not just a big pile of things, and we like group them together. So we go, okay, here's all the screenshots that apply to list view. We also cited, well, scroll and unstated row notifications are all part of what we call the wrapper, the whole page component type stuff. We reorganized like that, and then we cross-linked everything. So this form entry field, 
has uh, cross references within the pattern itself to the clear and clear and unclear actually entry things to the how input method, the input integrator, so you know that you're in text entry versus numeric entry mode and so forth. There's all these cross references, so you understand what components are used and why they're used and so forth, which I'll actually get to in a second, which is that one. They're explained, so we don't just show off little screenshots and icons and stuff, but write up what the pattern is and why it is. Key problem with a lot of the, communicating a lot of these is what, where did it come from? They're, because they're not just popular, they're, there's a reason behind them. So if you don't understand what it, why it is, you can't uh, prevent doing it the wrong way, for example. So they go into a little bit of cognitive psychology and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, that, the left one is a full one example of a full pattern, the right is a zoomed in section. So lots and lots and lots of text. Try to make it simple and there's a little explanatory uh, diagrams, there's bullet lists so you can choose, aha, here's my three basic types. So you can quickly skim it, but if you're going to really apply it, you need to read the whole thing. Um, and of course, I emphasize that this is one collection. Our, our pattern book is one collection of stuff, but it gives lots of information. Anytime you read this kind of stuff, you should be able to use the key search terms and go out to the rest of the world or to your old 50s Air Force Human Factors books and pursue that knowledge a little bit better. To if you don't understand what we mean by, oh, I don't know, the McGurk effect, it's an audio weirdness, then go look it up because we, we didn't just tell you, trust us, it does this behavior. We use the right term, tried at least, to use the right terminology and have some references so you can go look it up more. And you should always do that, the uh, software development. Side, uh, presentations have been saying that a lot. Here's a summary of how it works, but now you know, so therefore you can go look up how it really works. You need to be training yourself all the time. And as I already kind of pre-explained, their um, best practices but not common practices. There's a lot of stuff out there that isn't necessarily the right way to do things. Um, so if you want to do trendy cool things, I don't know, try interior design or fashion or something like that. But there should always be a good, good reason that improves the interface and the interactivity at the core of the design that you're executing. It can also be pretty and cool. It can be enticing and exciting. It should be something that makes people want to come back and use it again or pay for it or buy your products or whatever. But it needs to, it needs to work fundamentally. Um, so therefore, there need to be, that's what the big X is about, there need to be things called, which I've called anti-patterns. You need to identify what you should not do. Similarly, there's, um, that's part of that explanation that I was saying earlier, is we explain why you do it, but also therefore why you don't do certain activities. And then, sadly, another key attribute is patterns are often misunderstood or misapplied, which is what I'm gonna rant about for the next bit here. Um, and I actually can't remember my notes. So they, um, I, I summarize them into these little points. They're a little over summarized, but you know, you get the point across for that also. So, so I've done the exact same thing here. I've overstated the, the, the occurrence in order to make my point. But you know, but uh, but it'll do for our, for a presentational talk. So, being reactionary, I said Braddon's reactionary. They solve for a point problem. You find out through some analytics things that the change in your design means nobody's going and looking at your store hours, and they're calling the store to find out what they are. Oh well, therefore we better put a store hours link in there. Is that the right answer? Maybe, but how do I know if that's the way I pursued the question? You need to think about the thing, the whole thing systematically. Solve the whole problem statement. It might, that problem might be a hint that there's a bigger problem. Um, even when you solve it that way, they tend to be, uh, I couldn't come up with a better term, single view is what I say. So the website has this problem. And so we fix on the website. But what about the mobile app and the mobile site and the business process? Is there something else we can do with the call centers, with the way they answer the phone in the stores, with the whole thing to solve it there too. Again, often doesn't happen. More to patterns though, first solutions. You go through, you find a problem. You go through the thing, the first solution that meets, checks all the boxes, gets accepted. Hey, that works, so why bother pursuing any further? Key part of designing in this manner, deciding with uh, reusable components, is that you have to find all the components that are likely to work and compare them to figure out what the best thing is. 
There's more to it, which I mostly don't want to talk about because it's past uh, the scope, but research would, of course, be the best thing to figure out which, what's the right pattern for you, but you can do a lot by simply comparing the actual attributes. The rote solution is one of the ones that I particularly don't like. You pick the, you reuse an answer that somebody else has used, or you reuse the pattern just the way it was designed. So you go to one of those graphical pattern libraries, which is where I stole all these pictures. <laughs> Most of the pictures up here I took myself, or they're from my own things. These I just took from one of those guys. You go, that, that'll do perfectly, and you use it. Which is, again, it's kind of like the reactionary view. You're not designing for your system if you're doing that. You need to pick, you can use that as inspiration, and they're great, and you might end up very similar, but you need to design it to meet your systems. And almost the other side of the coin is the overly high level explanation of things. So if you pick something from, say, my pattern library, or a similar thing where you have little wireframe views only, this will be the solution, and then you just throw it over at the developers, build this thing, great, or even just visual designers. If you don't explain, again, why that is, what problem you're solving, what this pattern does to fix it, they're gonna implement it in whatever they, way they feel like, and that might involve losing the point of the solution that you were seeking. And I call these all the heuristic solution. Um, you know, all wrapped together. It's not bad, but it's kind of not good. It took me a long time to do this. I actually wrote like another whole book, which you've never heard of, because it was self-published and like 30 people bought it, about a design process that worked really well for me. But at one point I started to realize when we looked at the analytics that we were leveling off, that you could only get so good without relying on the genius designer style of things, or you know, flash of brilliance, yeah, you get there. But if you follow the steps step by step and you just do it, you'd yeah, you get okay. You get above average satisfaction, for example, but you never get stellar results. Went to some other places, used their process, and saw kind of the same thing. If you follow the stuff, so step by step by step, and you do everything perfectly, it's okay. Checks all the boxes. You don't get task failures. You get perfectly reasonable completion times, but who cares? Who would want to use that again? It's fine. And so I started in the last year or so calling it the heuristic solution. It's the fine, it's the okay solution. It checks the boxes when you do a heuristic evaluation, for example. And, um, oh, and I guess I should start with my caveat thing. It's possible that you work somewhere where this isn't a problem. <laughs> I have too, but eventually you work somewhere where there's a problem with things. I do some other assumptions here that like they're big, uh, you have bigger teams, you have to pass over the wall development. I'm kind of always assuming the worst case though. Some places things are much better, that's fine. Um, oh, and there was another point there, but now I've forgotten it. Oh well. Go ahead. I have a quick question. You know, a lot of times we'll use heuristical testing um, to sort of see if something is good or bad. And I know that's a very generic way to sort of evaluate something. But when you say a heuristic solution, you know, that, that can be contextualized in a lot of different ways. You know, one, one way to construe it is that you have a group of experts like you're talking about, where you have the best designer, the best developer, hopefully the best minds on the team that come together. And is that what you mean by checking the boxes like that team gets together? and they check the boxes yeah. and move them all forward? Um, in the bad way, it would mostly be that they aren't necessarily, they don't necessarily come up with a good, um, they don't stretch the solution. They just look at the, yeah, they just only go so far as to check the boxes. This has blue underlined links done. This has a tab mentality, this, whatever. You, you pick up patterns and reuse old, old uh, styles of things, or, or get, you, know, you don't just get inspired by another design, but you kind of almost copy it, and you just put it in there. You run through the heuristic evaluation, for example, even with several people, and everybody checks off, yes, it does all these things. But there's no holistic sense of design wrapped around it to make sure it is inspiring, magical, whatever you want to say like that. So yeah, so it's using a good, term, a good word in a bad sense on purpose, that it, when you misapply a design task, you misapply it. This is intentionally somewhat argumentative, too, by the way. You can disagree with me. 